Polling to order the Town of Harwich Board of Health for Tuesday, September 19th, 2023, 6.30 p.m. in Harwich Town Hall, Don B. Griffin Room. Anyone, it is, as required by law, the town may audio or video record this meeting. Any person intending to either audio or video record this open session is required to inform the chair. Nobody's here. Okay. <laughs> okay, first thing on the agenda is reorganization, since we forgot that back in June. We were supposed to have done that. So. Everybody's kind of looking. What does that actually mean? <laughs> we have to reorganize right. or whatever we do. New doing. chair, new, new chair, vice chair, or, new clerk. Yeah. So, so if anybody so. has any suggestions, mm. motions, or anybody that they want to. I like um, the way it is. I motion we keep things as they are. <laughs> <laughs> keep things as they are. I, I'd second I motion. Oh, okay. All in favor? <laughs> Okay, I'll go with it yeah. this time around. <laughs> next time I want somebody to think about who's going to take over next. Think about it till next year. <laughs> All right. Next year. Next year. Okay, votes. Aye. 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 Okay, I'm stuck with it. <laughs> For another year, you got to put up with me. Okay, so the first thing on the agenda is uh, the minutes. So it looks like we're going to have to do them separately because um, April, everybody was here. So any issues? I didn't see any issues on any of them, but let's start with April. Anybody? Anybody? No, no issues. All right. Do we have a motion? You're the motion man. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of April. I we have second, second the motion <laughs> to accept the April 2023 minutes. Vote. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the May minutes, um, Pam and Matt weren't here. So it's just the three of us have to vote on these. All right. Uh, so did anybody see anything wrong with May's minutes? Make a motion to accept the May minutes. I second that motion. Vote. Aye. 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 All right. June, uh, we're, we're all here. So anybody have any issues with June? Mm -mm. Make a motion to accept the minutes of June. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 All right. And July, Matt wasn't here, so. Uh, any, anything with the July minutes? Make a motion to accept July minutes. Second. Okay. Vote. Aye. Oh, aye. <laughs> aye. aye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, it was. Moving on to public comment, and there's. Nobody on there, right? That's just us. Yeah, All right. Um, minutes of the previous meetings. Oh, I did that it. out of order. I did it out of order. Sorry, folks. They were the next in my packet. I don't th think the public minded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, All right. Old business, we have none. New business, we have none. The report of the health director. Okay. So my updates for September 2023, um, we have some staff updates on December 11th, 2023, our new senior health agent, Meredith Ballinger started. She joins us from the Town of Wealth Fleet Health and Conservation Department. Meredith graduated with a bachelor's in science and public health from Ohio State University and has worked uh, with the Barnstable County as the AmeriCorps coordinator. So this is Meredith in the audience. Welcome, welcome, Meredith. Welcome. Welcome. Glad to have you. She's <laughs> already hit the ground running. Um, we're I very bet. happy <laughs> and excited to, <laughs> to have her aboard. We're looking forward to what we can teach her as well as what she can teach us. So, um, Sewer updates. This was meant, I guess, to be had 
back in August. Um, I was invited to attend a meeting with the water department um, and the DEP to discuss options for the towns to comply with the new NSA designation and amendments to Title V. It is the water department's intention to begin drafting notice of intent to file a watershed permit for the town of Harwich. The plan may create a need to reconfigure the time frame for each individual phase. Uh, at this point, our residents will not be required to add the best nitrogen reducing technologies to their on-site disposal systems. I have reached out to Chatham Health Department and the Chatham DPW for statistics on the amount of sewered properties. I still have not received an update on this. Um, hopefully more information is gonna come so we can compare what they have um, as far as who's required to connect versus us. I did reach out to Dan to get that information for our statistics so we can figure out um, where we're at when we are able to compare it with Adams. Are, is there something in the IMA that, that we have to follow um, with the connection? Did Dan say anything about that? So there's a certain flow allocation that we're allowed. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not near that because we're still just in our first beginning phases. And out of the 400 and something properties that have been ordered to connect, we have about half of that. But he's supposed to give me definitive numbers. And then we're still entering into phase three, which is I think a larger phase. And then phase four, we'll see what, I think phase four may change based on the need for the new NSA designations, but. And he's gonna, he's gonna file all watersheds in one. In one permit. In one permit. Yep. So we have five watershed permits, or five watersheds in town, mm -hmm. and he's gonna do a single watershed permit instead of five individual. And I think they've started moving forward with getting approval for the notice of intent for the select board. So I just wasn't sure whether for the time to connect I think originally we made it the same as Chatham, mm -hmm. but I don't know that that is going to be necessary. So we have um, the sewer use regulations to, um, which I have in your packets highlighted, which were implemented by the select board and I believe the wastewater commission mm -hmm. are also mandate the two years. So that is mandated within our regulations, but it's driven, that time Bye. frame is driven by another regulation, by another board that came first. All right, so. all right, all right. Uh, well, I'll, we'll touch on that when we get to something else in, in the packet, because I'm wondering whether th that was something that we wanted to change. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we would need to change of, that yeah. with, with wastewater. Yeah, part of further all right. discussion. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, starting next month, the variance documents will be available for review online. So anybody who's filing for a variance and placed on the agenda for Board of Health or just an in-house filing, we're gonna put those documentations um, online for people to review. So if there's a caller who's not local and they wanna see what the project is, they can go online and review any documentation associated with that project. And some of that may change based on the discussion tonight. Applying for variances? No, that's something that. Um, Did we? we, I, I, well, we're, I think we're talking about extensions. Extensions. I'm yep, sorry. You're right. You're right. Yep. Those those don't require a butter no, a butter notifications the yes. same way the the variances do. Yep. Okay. Uh, and just a quick COVID update. Um, we are seeing an uptick in COVID cases across the Commonwealth. Case numbers that are reported online are not accurate uh, due to the availability of home test kits and lack of reporting. We just caution people to stay at home when you're not feeling well, test frequently, and wear a mask in public if you are testing negative but have been a close contact. Okay, and that wraps up the update. All right. Uh, all right. All right, now I have seven here as updated intermunicipal agreement. Do we that last month's agenda? That was the one you just handed me when I said I did my mind wasn't 
I didn't have the second page on. Uh, I thought I took that off the agenda because. Okay. okay, so that one comes off. It comes off, right? Okay. Okay. Update. Yeah, that was just a correspondence, just giving yep. you the updated information, and we already got that. All right. Okay. So, figured it was moot at this point to provide. All right. Um, so then the. Oh, all right. So then we're back into this. Um, do you want you want to you want to pick up on this and discuss this? Yeah. So just some correspondence that I thought. Um, everybody might want to read up on uh, just to get familiar with in case you have any questions is um, and I think again this might be a little bit old news this was something I was going to provide you back in August but this is the uh, second family welcome center um, so the Healy Driscoll administration announces a second family welcome center to further expand services for families experiencing homelessness um, we're seeing a lot of uptick with um, shelters being opened up to accommodate homeless families and just wanted to make sure that you guys had some the most up-to-date information from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services regarding that. Okay. Um, we also have a green town that has been added to the list so that makes three mm -hmm. Western Massachusetts What's towns green? as green communities. What does that mean? So they just take all approaches possible to, to reduce their carbon footprint. Okay. Um, so it's basically in their daily municipal happenings, everything that they do is Great. geared towards reducing a carbon footprint. So. Okay. okay. And then the USDA uh, single family home repair loans and grants. Mm -hmm. So this is just some information regarding different loan and grant programs that our residents might be able to look for um, as a choice when they're looking to connect their sewer systems or septic systems or have uh, repa home repairs that they need. So some information I wanted to get to you in case you have people that are asking, uh, but we're going to post links to that on the website and make that more available people to have access to quickly yeah, that's helpful anybody have any comments or questions no? all right we're moving on to number eight the permit uh, doesn't look like there's anything out of line here Where, where's the uh on oak street where's the many donuts in, in all these places where is that so those are event permits. So those are like mobile food vendors oh, that are coming mobile. in from. Okay, mobile. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering about that. A <laughs> lot of those probably would have been at a cranberry festival this past <laughs> weekend, but. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, we didn't, we kind of washed out. Yeah. So they are going to be, I think it's been postponed to yeah. a date in October, mm -hmm. it's October 21st. Okay. Okay. Is it October 21st? I think it's October 21st, maybe 22nd or 20th and 21st. Okay. Okay. We have a motion. Make a motion to accept the permit. I second that motion. Oh. Aye. 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 Uh, other, we don't have any other. Uh, and then the workshop. Um, yeah. Other would be if you, if any of you had any topics that you wanted to get on our agenda or discuss briefly without voting. And if we had any call for, uh, I mean, Governor Healy, I, I think it's putting some immigrants in uh, on the Cape. Have we had any uh, people coming into Howard that you know of? Not that we know of. I know for a lot of the communities on the Cape, it's they're here and then you know about it. Okay. Um, so that's what what we're anticipating if there is uh, I have taken a look at some of our available spaces in town and there doesn't seem to be too many that could be potential spots um, but there are a couple that I think we would kind of look to see if, if if we know if they any families end up here we have a good idea of where they're going to end up and trying to prepare 
ahead of time for what services they may need. All right, moving on to 10. So this is the workshop. Now the board, of, uh, the, the board guidelines for sewer connection and waivers kind of falls right into the to be discussion with the chair or the board of assessors. So to me, they're kind of the same thing. Yeah, and I, I wanted to make sure that you can open them both up so you can talk because this was a continued item. Oh, the first, um, that's right. All right. Yeah, but having. All right, so if it's a continued item, do I, I don't open it. I'm just. You, you can just continue. reopen it, continue the discussions, and then open B at the same time. Okay, so continue the discussion for the board guidelines for sewer connection waivers and open a workshop for the discussion with the chair or the board of assessors. Are we ready? <laughs> You're it. Put you on the spot. <laughs> May I? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Hey everyone, Madam Chair, yes. Richard Waystack on behalf of the Board of Assessors. Thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you for being here. We had an interesting discussion last week. <laughs> yes, we did. Because I spoke under protest at your workshop, <laughs> with the joint workshop with the Board of Selectmen of Wastewater. But you did a very good job. Thank you, ma'am. What in particular can I speak to you about tonight? We huh. spoke last week about programs that we, as the Board of Assessors, have purview over. Mm -hmm. And we talked about what our guidelines are when we bring someone in, and we have a number of programs. I'm sorry, I should have printed out these for all of you. We have a veteran's exemption, a sight impaired exemption, a senior exemption for those over the age of 65 years old. We have a senior exemption for those over the age of 70 years old. We have a deferral program where people can defer their taxes. We have a surviving spouse of police officer or firefighter. We have a hardship exemption where if anything else fails, if folks may fall under either a uh, financial or disability type scenario that we can look at. Um, we also have a senior work off program for those who can actually work up to, frankly, $3,000 off of their taxes by working in a community capacity for the town somewhere. We have a lot of folks who do that through our Council on Aging as well. Um, we also have a veteran uh, property tax work off. Each of those programs has criteria. Mm -hmm. And one criteria, which is the senior work off for both 65 and 70, and the hardship exemption, which we use as a similar set of criteria, has us look at a resident taxpayer's assets and their income. And it is substantial. And for those of you who weren't there, uh, when an application comes in to our assessor or staff downstairs, they will look at their application, which will include federal and state income tax returns for the previous year, in this case, 2022. This Social Security pension and income received as of December of 22. Uh, any SSI amount, we will look at their bank accounts, their stock and bond accounts, uh, other property that they may own in terms of assets and other information that we as a board of assessors may request of a taxpayer. An average packet may run 30 to 40 pages. Right. And our staff, which I, I need to give a shout out to, are excellent and they work very diligently with our taxpayers to see that they provide all the documentation as necessary. And most folks are very forthcoming because they know that this could be up to $3,000 off in their taxes and in some cases more if they file a hardship exemption as well. What's the criteria? For this particular year, if we have an individual taxpayer, person without a spouse who's by themselves, their gross income um, with an exclusion is $44,700, $44,700. And their assets, and this is really, really important, when it comes to the assets. Their assets do not include their home. So it's other assets they would have in the bank, stock, et cetera. That amount is 66800 
So with that criteria in mind, if you had income less than that, you would reach the age of 65, and you had assets less than that 66,000, you would qualify for a senior tax credit, which will give you an automatic $1,500 off of your tax bill. Madam Chair, you spoke last week about folks you have spoken to who have questions about the, uh, how the town can help, that yeah. they may be able to qualify for a loan from mm -hmm. the Baltimore County, but they can't afford to pay it. Mm -hmm. For certain taxpayers, we, if they fall within these programs, we can, in essence, get them up to $3,000 a year. And I will speak to our health director who may know far better than I the exact parameters of the Barnstable County Loan Program. Is that a five-year payback? Is that a? I believe that's a 10-year. And more so if we're a 10-year payback, this could pay for that program for someone. All right, uh, um, question there. You're saying it's up to 3000 uh, Now, we're looking at somebody that's going to have to pay for, t theoretically, the sewer connection, mm -hmm. all right? Um, I don't know what that's actually running. I know uh, when I spoke to somebody up at the bank, they said some of the people that are coming in for that to include their engineering and mm -hmm. all the other stuff, they're rough, roughly running around 50000 I To be very frank with you, I think that's excessive. Okay, good. And, and I spoke <laughs> to a taxpayer who was connected within the last year. Okay. Their total cost was $4,000. And that included their engineering? engineering. As well. I, what we as realtors quote, I had a property that was in phase three and recently put under contract, actually closing uh, Thursday. And the buyers know, because we had to disclose that it's yeah. within phase three, that they within two to four years will be receiving a letter from the town that they will have to connect within a two year period. And that was sits back from the road approximately 150 feet. So it's a pretty good run. Yeah. And, and the estimation was in the ballpark of 15 to 20. I've not heard anywhere that 50. All right. Nowhere near I, that. I thought that was high, but that's what they it told is. me. I, I think a majority from what we are seeing from my industry is 15 at a max 20. All right. And I think it's imperative that taxpayers look to the county to look at their program. All right, now that's, that's the... That's the Brownsville County Loan Program, Septic Loan Program. So and if, if residents are already, sorry, if go I ahead, may. Go ahead. Um, if residents are already taking advantage of your program mm -hmm. and coming to us and still at a shortfall, I guess, there's no, there's no extra uh, other programs, because I know you touched briefly on um, creating legislation that could help specifically for the sewer connection as creating an exemption, or I don't know if there's a, a way that the town can put hold on the property if they put funds out or... Similar to our deferral program, if I may. calling the deferral, okay. And, and I'm, again, speaking outside of the box. Again, I'm speaking as chair. I'm not speaking with the authority of the entire board, and obviously not speaking at all for the board of select, uh, select board. We have a deferral program that residents can defer their taxes. Again, there is criteria for Now, that. you keep saying refer, sorry to interrupt you. You keep saying taxes, but that could be used for... Again, and, and that's... I'll get there for you. Okay, all right. Our deferral program basically puts a lien against the property. All right. And it used to be 8% simple interest. Uh, three years ago, we had that drop to 5% simple interest that a resident would pay. And it's not compounded. It's a simple interest. So that if someone were deferring their taxes every year, it, let's say hypothetically it was $4,000 a year in taxes. They mm -hmm. would defer those taxes. A lien would be placed against the house until those taxes were paid back. And... It's a great program that you could potentially model for a sewer program that people could defer out with an abatement. Here's the thing. We have an overlay account. The account that we use for people who are giving these tax credits, mm -hmm. these veterans, all of these exemptions that I mentioned, and for folks who are coming in filing an abatement on their value of their property, some comes in and says, hey, my house isn't worth a million dollars, it's worth 800000 
and if the board were to provide them an abatement, that money that would go back to them comes from what we call the overlay account. The Board of Assessors in the town budget every year are given an amount of money that will take care of these exemptions and these overlays. You could do a program similar to, you could do an aqua fund locally, but you'd need to fund it. And if it's going to be funded, you would need a mechanism to see that people qualify to be able to utilize it. Yeah. And again, you could, there are a number of ways that you can look at doing it. You really have to think outside the box yeah. because there will be people. Yeah. And, and right now we have scenarios that folks are receiving a senior tax credit. But that's all they get. If someone were to come in and file under what it, it's, it's called a uh, Clause 18, which is a hardship exemption, in that particular case, we may be able to say, hey, you've just picked up a loan for a septic connection that you can't afford. So we have given you a senior tax credit of 1500 and potentially you could do a work off for another 1500 The uh, hardship exemption could look at the rest of their taxes and, and give them a percentage off on that as well. So we have a number of programs. If someone were going to the Barnstable County Loan Program mm -hmm. and getting a loan out, that could assist them in paying that loan. All right. So <clears throat> there are a number of programs you can look at. Legislation is great, but it's going to take you two to three years to get something passed. And you may want to look at something for town meeting to look at a, a local program that is run, and again, I truly don't want to speak for my board because I'm speaking out of school. We have a process that we use. And our meetings now, we are looking at 10, 20, I think we looked at close to 100 applications the other night of people, are they qualified for these programs? We have a mechanism in place. You're being tasked with can you, can people seek a delay? Mm -hmm. You know, that's an entirely different thing. But when it comes to a program to assist, we have mechanisms in place. And if, if it's something that doesn't work for everybody, we could look at a program. You could potentially file an article at town meeting if you had to, to create a local aqua fund. And what's the look on his face behind me? <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> um, but frankly, you have to get creative. You know, the bottom line is to take care of the community, you know, and to encourage connections to our wastewater program. So I think you need to look outside the box of how you can accomplish that for people. Yeah. I'm, I'm please talk. Uh, you said it costs $4,000 for this particular person? One person, yep. Okay, now, what is the cost if you had a new septic system? A new septic system right now? I had two done for my clients in the last year. One was 35000 one was 20000 okay. to do a new septic. Okay. So how close are these sewer connections running to 4000 Are they running way up the, the, I, I would recommend that you'd be in a comfortable range of fifteen to 20000 with engineering. Okay. So it's less than basically putting a new system in. So to speak. Correct. Correct. The burden comes where someone has done a septic in the last two to three years. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, and now they're being tasked with having to you know, connect. And that's something that we are going to be discussing yeah. as far as changing our sewer regulations, or talking about changing it yes, to yes. accommodate some of that. Yes. Um, now I have a question because, and this is, this is for clarification. We started out, and, and Dan was with us. I, I was sitting with uh, Carrie. Yeah, it was it? Yeah, it was you and Dan and I. Um, before we, you were involved in this, thinking of how, you know, what we were going to do when people come and ask for an extension. All right, um, and a lot of it's going to be d different types of extension. As far as determining whether it's a hardship or not, all right, we were looking at um, some of the things that we had jotted down. Uh, that this is nothing that was finalized. What was the only home? All right, um, and the reason for the extension was it a hardship? Um, uh, like age and or fixed income or other. We also had one that's financial. And then the, we were, what we had considered was asking whether or not they have looked at other resources. For instance, the Aqua Fund, the Cape Cod Housing Authority, HUD, home equity loans or lines of credit. Um, 
and then we have downtown of Harwich when all else fails with a question mark. <laughs> so uh, that still has the question mark on it. Um, and then one of the other things that would fall into that is whether they have a passing Title V report, because that's going to determine also what we can do. So if looking forward, as these extensions come to us, and with us working with you, does it make sense that we screen them first? And if they say it's financial, just automatically tell them to come over to the assessing department? Or do we go ahead and ask them whether or not they have um, looked at these other resources? And if they have, and it hasn't worked, we need some documentation because my concern is if we're looking at this and, and you start somebody saying, you know, well, I have a hardship, I can't afford it, and I did look at this, and if you don't take it, if you don't see a document that says, I looked at it and it didn't pass or we didn't get it, you're liable to end up with some people just saying it when that isn't truly the case. So to be fair and equal to everyone, it seems like it would make sense to do they, have they looked at these? Now, does that make sense with what you're saying? Or how would you see this falling into place, working, having the two departments work together? You have a couple things there. <laughs> okay. Number one, a lot of these folks are not going to qualify for a home equity loan. Probably not. And yeah. They don't have the income to pay that loan. Mm -hmm. And right now, with the interest rates as they are, they're yeah, much better even. going to Barnstable County to get a loan there because that's a zero percent interest. Now the Barnes, does they ha is, is that the aqua fund, the Barnes? Yeah, that's, that's the, the yeah, all right. Number one. Number two, the information that we have for a taxpayer is done in executive session. We cannot share that list per se of mm -hmm. who receives a senior tax exemption or not. There, uh, we would have to investigate that and I frankly would be concerned about releasing any. Uh, yeah. Do, you, that, that do you give them an approval? Like, if they get an approval, you offer them an, a letter? They're informed. Okay. Yes, they are. And, and whether it's letter form or a call. Madam Chair, I will say this. The people who come to the Board of Assessors for assistance, mm -hmm. in my 17 or 18 years sitting on a board, there's only one time we have seen fraud. People coming here, you have to understand, especially someone who's a senior in this community, Mm -hmm. who's coming hat in hand to a board, and this can be intimidating for someone who's not used to this environment, mm -hmm. to have someone sit here or sit at that microphone and say, I need an extension because I can't afford this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those people do need the help. Yes. And yes, you can ask them, are you receiving any assistance from the town? I frankly wouldn't do it in an in a open session. No, no. no. I it think would no. be no. application process. It would be like right. an application right. type yeah. of thing, That's fine. a packet that you would give and, them. And if frankly someone were coming in to speak to you face to face, I would strongly consider going into an executive session yeah, oh, to yes. preserve their dignity coming forward. Nobody wants to come hat in hand asking for help. Yeah, yeah, all right. But the folks that we have worked with over the years, again, one fraud. And in that particular case, what it was is they had a property in Florida and they had a property here in Harwich. And they did not represent they owned a property in Florida, we found out. That was a one time, again, yeah. in my history in the Board of Assessors. People who are coming do need the assistance. Right, so if, if we had a packet put together um, at, that somebody, I guess, online would look for an extension, mm -hmm. and then we have we give them a packet, and that packet would include, did you do this or this? In other words, it's not in an open session. Mm -hmm. If they if that comes back, that they're, they're claiming a financial hardship, so it's not out in the open, mm -hmm. then we just would send, you know, have some sort of a, I don't know whether we would just tell them to go to the assessors or we have a formal uh, application to come to you. Does that make sense? I, I'm looking for like, a process. You made the comment last week that you and your board are not looking to go through applications right. to determine hardship. We have a mechanism in place, and I think your application, you should look at and, and speak with the department head, the mm -hmm. actual assessor, Director of Assessing, to see our applications. And again, these are state approved by the Department of Revenue. Mm -hmm. And to see what people are putting on their application, it might assist you in your process by saying, okay, here are some of the questions you need to ask. Okay. And I think 
if, if you look at, I think you have too much in your application of did you look here, here, here. I think you need to look at, did you look at the Barnstable County Aqua Fund? Okay. You know, that's the first and most important place. Okay. This is a very, very proud generation yes. of folks over the age of 65. Mm -hmm. um, many, it takes years of us talking to them before they're willing to step forward. I have one woman, it took me five years to get her to accept a deferral. And in her 80s, she was down bagging groceries at the supermarket mm -hmm. to pay her taxes, to pay her food, to pay her medications, to pay for her utilities. And after five years, she, she caught me one day and said, I finally filed for it. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. we have programs in place. The town is generous, and we should utilize the programs where necessary. So then you're suggesting maybe Carrie talk to the um, assessor. The assessor. Correct. And find out what. Exactly the application. And okay. she can provide an application. You have to create your own process mm -hmm. and your own procedure. Mm -hmm. At our next meeting, which we have scheduled on the agenda, it will be, is there an interest of the board to do a further level of screening working with the Board of Health? All right. Again, it's not my decision. Mm -hmm. It's a decision of the board, mm -hmm. and we need to do that at an open meeting. And I'm happy to invite you, our meeting is open as well, to have you come down and speak to our board. All right. But I just, and I think it would be very worthwhile as department head to department head that mm -hmm. you speak ahead of time. Mm -hmm and potentially come to our meeting. And my board is great. They've done a whole lot of wonderful work over the years. You know, right. bottom line is how can we assist our taxpayers in need? And, and I know my board is very uh, willing to do so. All right. Any other uh, questions, Madam Chair, that I can ask, or any other members of the board? I have any can't questions? think of any right now. I'm sure I will later. <laughs> There's somebody behind you would like to speak. Uh-oh, sneaking out. <laughs> yeah, i got to watch my back. Sit down up there. No, no, no I'm going to be brief. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, just some clarifying numbers from the 4,000 versus the 50,000. Um, just in from the wastewater superintendent, 7,500 to 12,000 is the average hookup, uh, 1,000 to 2,000 on engineering, and 1,000 is uh, more likely than the 2,000, depending on what your lot is. All right. Um, there have been several on the low end at, at 4,000. One um, customer of mine just did theirs. It was 10,000, East Harwich, uh, Fredericksburg, yep. um, 10,000, Barnstable County loan, $47 a month for 20 years. Right. So Barnstable County is up to 20 years, so that's the, the other number. I think number. when they were in speaking to us, I think they said, very rarely did they turn anybody down. That Very been, rarely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those are the numbers just in from Dan Pelletier. And then um, you have access to town council. You might want to check with them to make sure you can do any of this process okay. in executive session before you make that part of your. Yeah. There's certain criteria you have to meet to have executive session. Yeah. This I don't think qualifies, certainly on your end. Uh, I, once I, it gets I, to a hardship, I think the board if, of assessors If it would get can. to that, if, if it, they're saying it's, when we send the packet out, if it comes back hardship, then I think it would make sense to refer them to your department if, if after talking to your. And, and Madam Chair, while I have a member of the select board here, it would be a discussion of the board, I think, under the authority of the board of selectmen. Um, it's unusual to see committees working closely together like this. And, and yeah. again, we're happy to assist, but this needs to be run up the chain of. of mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as we discussed last week, we probably will put something before town meeting to get a bucket of money or try and get a bucket of money to be able to assist people. So then, would that not that since it's still hypothetical, would that then go over to the to the assessors that they would have access to that 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 they would go through the assessor to get it? I have no idea. No idea. All right. uh, but it depends on how we structure the procedures. I'm sure that that bucket of money would go somewhere like that right. that we would tap off of. All right. So for the ones that we have waiting now, <clears throat> um, I don't. Do we have a packet ready? I think we could definitely still send the few that are saying there's a financial burden to Richard you could give them the extension based on 
you don't have to do a, a five-year extension or a 10-year extension. You could do a smaller extension while they explore that option. All right, so if we did something like that, in other words, referring it to you and we just give them the extension. And I just want to, yeah. to the director of assessing. Yes, 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 the, to the, the yes. The, there's a separation between yes, the sorry. board and the staff. Yeah, because uh, they'll be take in the applications that'll right. get on your agendas the way it needs to, but yeah. that could at least relieve some burden for this board to make a determination whether yeah. there's a true hardship, because if there is, there are programs in place that they can explore or extend beyond programs that they may already qualify for, from how I understand. So, yeah, so if I may, Madam Chair, if, Go ahead. if you do have people with hardship, please send them to the assessing department now. And the process, it's not that quick because people have to put an application together mm -hmm. to look for assistance. If I may suggest, you know, that you look at a six month or a one year extension to allow them to get all of that through the process at the assessor's office. Yeah, and for those truly faced with financial difficulties, a one year would give, I feel like, would give them a sense of breathing room. Breathing, yeah. Because six months can move quickly. Yes. Um, especially when they're trying to get documentation together that might not be easy for them to understand what they need and go through that process. So and when when's we, your next you know we do have a timeline of when applications need to be submitted. They're not they're not accepted year round. Mm -hmm. Oh. So and we start basically July 1st and it does run for a period of time but you want to encourage people again I would do that sooner than later mm -hmm. to refer them down. Um, so a year is a reasonable time frame. All right. All right. So when's your next meeting? <laughs> and I will touch base with Carly to, at her convenience, because I know she's inundated And Terry, there. I just don't know if we have an idea. I know you've been talking about numbers of people that have been ordered to hook up at this point. It's about 450 or so, mm -hmm. and about half have about hooked half. up. Yeah. Do we know, after putting out, 450 orders just to you know use rounder numbers how many exception requests have, do we already have we have been putting off any extension requests pending some kind of policy or guidelines to follow from the board mm -hmm. so right. we're discussions we started in July and then we didn't continue in August we're picking up now just trying to find a direction to go, uh, which is the continued discussion I think we're still in. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can get some of the hardships, give them a breathing kind of buffer. Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to get an idea. Like I, mm -hmm. I, again, you know, gut instinct is that I say we get probably a lot have, more volume oh, than. Half a dozen, but I imagine as we accept them and word gets out, we may have more. Um, so before we, the board started to ap approve, it, opening up the criteria for what. And if we can, again, take the financial piece, you have a hardship, we're going to give you the extension, will you explore your options for financial reasons. The board can then look at the age of the systems and set a cutoff date for the age of the systems and allow staff to review those in-house so they don't have to come in front of the board Mm -hmm. And then everybody who falls in between is going to be the ones that you make the determination kind of on what. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear them, if there's any cutoff criteria you don't want to hear, if you want to just explore them all in the beginning to see which ones you're starting to find commonplace. Just, it's more of a policy and a guideline than redrafting a regulation or creating a regulation. Now, I would also think that we shouldn't wait till next month since we ha do have some people already waiting, that we need to maybe have a workshop. At least a starting point. Yeah, we need to maybe have, uh, let's say a week or two, two weeks, to have just a workshop just to go over if we, if, and I'm, I'm willing to work with Terry, we can put something together for you guys to look at and say, okay, you know, whether you accept it or not, so we can get something together to get online so these people have something to look at. And this is just kind of a tick list of yeah. 
things you may want to consider. Yeah. You can scratch them out, you can you know, expand upon them. This was kind of just a starting bullet point yeah. of discussion. Yeah, for you that to was start to think really about. a starting point, yeah. Dave. Our next meeting is October 10th at 5.30 p.m. What day of the week is that? That's Tuesday, it's the day after the holiday, doctor. And um, we do meet in the assessor's office. There's a back conference room. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, we have somebody and, behind you again. Uh, to Rich's earlier point about um, getting people in front of them sooner rather than later for the tax credits. Yeah. Uh, Barnesville County Loan Program, they applied, uh, customers applied less, it was less than 30 days. Uh, basically, no questions asked, 20 year loan, $10,000, $47 a month, paid in full by 2043. So right. certainly a 0%. tax credit, 0%. Yeah. Tax credit, um, any tax credit certainly would cover a portion of that at $47 okay. a month. So there are options already before we go to the next level. And I think we probably find that some of these six um, would probably qualify for this program already without coming up with um, town meeting votes or anything else to get money in a bucket. All right. See, that's why he's on the select board. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm glad I, he's I here. how to use the iPhone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I have another question because I think um, Kevin's going to ask one this. Do we have anything in the, in the wind working for the average income, younger people with kids going to college and whatever else for help? Can they go to this Barnes to Wall as well? Or is that a strictly hardship financial? Mm -hmm. No, Aqua Fund is open to any, any applicant. And if I can, Mr. DuPont, the, we have filed legislation with uh, Representative Peake looking at a hardship program for taxes for those under the age of 60. But again, it takes time to get through committee, to get voted through. It, it, it's not a quick process, but we have successfully filed legislation a few times to get that accomplished. It's, it's new and it will most likely, as in the past for our legislation, come in as a local option rather than statewide. I, frankly, I, I'm concerned about Harwich yeah. and the residents of Harwich. So if they do it as a local option, that would be fine with us. We're in the process. It's not gonna happen in the next six months. How long ago, did you, out of curiosity, how long ago did you submit the... It's been a while ago. A while, okay. Yeah. So but something, again, yeah. the, the wheels of sometimes democracy... It works very slow. So slow, so. Yes. Anything else, Madam Chair? I can't think of anything to say. Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah. Um, the, app the application that you have, can you get a copy of that? Is that we're gonna, we're gonna get a copy of that? And, and I think that would make sense for... Yeah, the, because I think we... I think we'd like to know what the criteria is. Yes. Sure. And stuff like that, and then so we have an idea what to tell people. Yeah. yeah. And and um, and again, we might be able to use some of that. Like I said, if we get that, and then let's say have another meeting, like two weeks, and do it a workshop. Yeah. In other words, yeah. nothing other than just a workshop meeting. Can we do that, Michael? Can we have a workshop meeting? That A workshop is a public meeting. You have to post it just like this meeting. It, it just is in a workshop format where people in public can attend. They're just not talking. Okay. You don't have to call on anyone. All right. and we can but anybody can have a workshop. All right. But All it right. is a public meeting. All right, okay. We're happy to provide that information. And I think Carrie speaking to the Great. assessing yeah. director, I would just be careful of trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, and yeah. When the both committees have a procedure, mm -hmm. you know, and if, and if the board of assessors are comfortable looking at applications, whatever may come, that's fine. But you don't want both boards overlapping, doing the same it, thing. Yeah. It, it sounds like to me that the financial criteria that you've set for some of these um, is within reason. And if again, if we can allow people time to take those actual hardships let the, the folks who are qualified to look at financials and make that determination off your plate so you, we don't have to burden mm -hmm. our, ourselves with the hardship well, aspect. I don't, I, I don't think our committee is <coughs> not qualified. To we're not qualified to look at that. Qualified for that. Just to clarify, 
that is criteria set by the Department of Revenue. Mm -hmm. We uphold the criteria that they have established. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chair, members of the board. All right. So for the for the meeting on the on the uh, on the tenth, um, if the whole board wants to attend, then we'll we'll have to. Also You'll have to post your we'll right. yeah. yeah. All right. And, and if we're going to do that, we should look at another venue rather than the assessor's office. The assessor's office. office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe we can. Well, not fit you all. We may want to try to meet up here. Yes. All, all right. right. Okay. All right. But that, as I know, that is a night. I believe that the Board of Selectmen are meeting, so it may have to be, be in, the, in the small meeting room. room. That's yeah. fine. Oh, on the 10th, okay. okay. Carrie, may, may that you can work with Carly on. Yes, I'll touch base with Carly. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. My Thank pleasure. You. Right here, it has better application. Can you yes. Take out some seats. All right. And so if you wanted to continue your discussion a little bit tonight on some of the things you wanted to talk about with extensions um, okay before we get to that um, so is everybody open to meeting let's say in, in two weeks to go over some of the material that we put together mm -hmm. yeah. is there um, Absolutely. We'll, we'll come up with some dates and and um, Carrie can send it out to you guys and then mm -hmm. let's see what works what I'd like to do at that meeting is not only the extension but um, and we can start on this tonight, the sewer regulations, the, the, uh, the timing. Vision. Yeah, um, of, of what we want to do. So, uh, so I had that on the other page. All right, so what we were looking at extending the times, and I, mm -hmm. was that within in the sewer regulations? Yeah, so I know we had talked um, during the executive session with um, the joint meeting with the select board and the wa wastewater commission regarding a blanket extension mm -hmm. was discussed about just doing one time frame. Anybody in phase two, we're going to give you an added um, 180 days or whatever to expand upon. Um, it's in written in our regulation to give them that two years from order of connection. Mm -hmm. We do have the ability to look at things on a case by case basis as per the way our regulations are written. But on top of that, it would be challenging to do a blanket extension because it's also written in the sewer use regulations that they're given uh, two years. 730 days, which are not our regulations to change. So we have no. Now, who is, are those the uh, wastewater? Water. This is water department. I think this was voted in by the select board, but the wastewater department or commission has the authority. Okay. So we don't have the authority to change their regulations. So. All right, so then maybe that is, all right. Then that's something I think we need to bring to the board of selectmen. You said it came from them and then to water. So what we do have the authority to do, you still have the authority to create the policy for extensions on a case by case basis. Um, you can look at time frames, how old the systems are. So you can revisit an, an age system um, if you want to give automatic extensions, I think, for the age of the system, the same way you did the IA system. Which I think makes sense. Yep. You can do. I think that makes sense. Yep. If you allow, set a certain time frame that you're comfortable with for a traditional system versus an IA system, and you create that in your policy, each one of those cases are still being reviewed at your discretion on a case-by-case -case basis, but they might not necessarily have to wait and come in front of you, they can get approved by staff at the staff so level. If we, so if we level. change the regulations to kind of line that the, uh, the Title V's along with the IAs, that we um, make that the same and then allow you, you can just blanket. You, you could even create a policy that we create an application that they still have to apply for that yeah, extension mm -hmm. based on the age of the system. It's just a quicker review in-house and they don't have to wait to come in front of you. Every month. 
the hardship ones, if they're claiming a hardship, you can give them a year to explore their options and then return with any update. And then everything in between is kind of at your discretion on whether you want to set. All right, so how about in the next two weeks, and I'm willing to help you with this because you're going to have to be kind of the driver on this as far as some of the timing, mm -hmm. and get something in a draft form that we can give, give to yeah. you guys. You know, to, we can sit and discuss and mm -hmm. say, you know, well, I think it should be longer or shorter or. Right. We can create a formal application and you can take these point notes mm -hmm. and see if there's anything you want to add to it or remove to the application based on age of system. We can do one for the age of the system and then you can create a general board of health filing application for sewer extensions. All right. All right. So how about if you and I work on that? Yeah. All right. And then we'll look at some dates uh, for the next, let's say, in two weeks, somewhere around, I don't even know what the date is today. It's <laughs> the 19th, 19th today, so some time between the 19th and the 10th um, of October. Okay. And is there a day of the week that works best? I don't, ha I don't, I don't have any, I don't do anything at night. <laughs> <laughs> I watch the news. <laughs> so is there any, any? I, I mean, the only, I, I close on Thursdays, some there potentially till 6.30. Mm -hmm. so the yeah. office, last person appointments are, you know, six o'clock, but if those appointments run late, I am required to be, I'm the last person out the door. I can't so leave maybe until something all other than Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Anything right. other than Thursday would likely work. <laughs> um, I could yeah, Wednesday arrange night's it. not good for me. All yeah. right. <laughs> okay. Monday and Tuesday is fine. Okay. So, so we're looking at Monday, okay. Tuesday. Who s you said Thursday and I'm you said Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Or Friday so then. Maybe Friday. I'll touch base with you to find out yeah. the dates, upcoming weeks, what you're, if, do you know? So how far ahead you get your schedule? My schedule's laid out. It's just I can get held over and stuff like that and order them. All right. All right. So then we'll just, we may have to, you know, we'll do it. And if we have to work around you or, or if you, yeah. you know, if we can get, if the other people show up, we, we can still. So I will be sending out an email with some potential dates. Good. If you can all respond yeah. <laughs> as quickly as possible yes. so we can get the agenda drafted and set. Yeah. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything at, at certain nights that you? No, I don't do anything at, at night. <laughs> <laughs> Just I don't get home yeah. until 7, 7.30 and after that, oh. so nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so l looking at maybe a Monday or a What's Tuesday. What's the average age of a septic? Um, which, in other words, if you, somebody had a septic that was mm -hmm. like, say, uh, 10 years old, mm -hmm. okay, and they wanted to hook up, mm -hmm. okay, or they had a hookup, okay, now how, are they exempted until, how, how is that? I'm, I'm, I'm not ten, clear. 10 years to me under the 95 code is still Viable. a fairly new system. Viable. Yeah. Okay. How about 30? 30, they're designed, they're designed for 20 to 30 years. Okay. You have cesspools in the ground that are 100 years old. So, so does some of that really depend on the usage? The in use, other words, the yeah, soil, you got five people in the, in the, in the home. Yeah. Groundwater, where groundwater is located, soil conditions. Yes. So you 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 get a, I would think if you get a pump, if you've never gotten a pump, that might be. Three to five years, it's always recommended that you yeah, come three yeah. to five years, depending on need. We do it every two. Yeah, yeah. we do it every two. <laughs> yeah, we do it every two. Uh, but there, there are things that can fail a system prematurely. If you're dumping a lot of grease into your system, that's going to, you know, ruin your leach field because that grease can carry over. That doesn't settle at the bottom. That mm -hmm. floats on the yeah, surface. Yeah. Yeah. Like homogenized mold fields ago, yep. the crinkles of the top. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Landscaping sometimes can prematurely fail, fail a system. Heavy irrigation, those types of things can, can fail your system too. So there's there's a lot of factors yeah. um, that go into the age of a system. Generally, they say 20 to 30 years. If you go beyond 30, you're doing good. Oh, yeah. I can. Good. That's going to be, I'm going to be long gone. 
<laughs> Hopefully. You know, you see, you might still be the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'm, I'm closer to 80 than 70, trust me. <laughs> so it's going to be. Um, you and I will bring our walkers. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's for yeah. sure. So, yeah, um, all right. Is there anything else you wanted to bring up? So the, there's one more work session item agenda, and this is the time frame for our real estate transfer. So these are people who are currently under order to connect to sewer that are transferring the property. So the responsibility for connection is transferring to the buyer, and we said 45 days from date of closing. We've gotten a lot of pushback from people that that date is just unreasonable, that you, you have to connect anybody. within 45 days after your closing. So you might have somebody whose connection order gives them until January 24 or June 24, but now they're being told that once we close, we have 45 days. Does it make sense Does it make sense to give them the same time option as the people that were, are leaving that house? At this point? Um, of course, I'm thinking, I, I know there's a, a rough time getting engineers, yep. or even even um, the uh, septics, or the uh, installers. Yeah. So a lot of these properties are five months okay. out, nine months out, and we offer the same waiver for people in phase three. So you're saying for phase three, you have to connect 45 days yeah, once you transfer. So if you're not in a phase that's currently under order, you're getting more time than the people who are under order. So, so if they're, if they're, they're not, saying if they're, if we don't want to have our order, system. They don't even have a time limit. No. So they're, they're saying we don't want to have our system inspected we have to connect to sewer, we know that's coming up in the next couple of years. We're looking for a waiver from septic inspection. Mm. So those, those that are in phase three, that 45 days, and we did this, started this originally before people were ordered to connect. Mm. So once you get, get your connection order, then you have 45 days when you've had all this time to think about it. Yeah. But to say to somebody who's it's closing like next week, you have 45 days from next week. All right, can we, can we, and this is, <laughs> I'm gonna really put a lot on you. Mm -hmm. Can we include, make it a separate policy or whatever we're gonna call it. Mm -hmm. Can we work on those three things for, the, for this upcoming meeting? So this, this could be a matter if, if the board feels that keeping the connection deadline date as the connection order reads, is appropriate, this is just a matter of changing the wording on this document. All right. So for this one, um, we have our, if your septic fails, we also have a 45 day to upgrade your septic, but that's written into your regulations, so that would be a regulation change. Okay, so all right, on this one, with the, the one we're talking about, X, C, yeah. 10 C. All right, in no case shall the completion date be made beyond the date of the sewer system connection availability. Where's the language? So we're, so what are we looking at at making that? If we're not going, if we want to extend that. Yeah, so it's just the buyer is to comply with the sewer connection order in the time frame set forth in that connection so, order. All right, uh, uh, on the original. Mm -hmm. All right, and we can word it like that. Mm -hmm. Can we and I can change that language and bring that back to you for final approval at next month's meeting. Or we, we can, can put it on the, the work session. We can put it on the work session, and mm -hmm. then we can get that. We can, we can feel like we finalized something, maybe. <laughs> so this, is, this, to me, is a, a pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yes. We're giving, we're giving people in farther out. And I, I, considering how hard it is to get, get the engineers and and, and the, uh, the plumbers that have to do whatever work they need to do. The, I, the terms thrown my way are this is an unrealistic time frame, yeah. and I'm not in disagreement with that. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. 
and just looking for your opinions before I go and change a document that you guys approve. So what do you think of as far as, as what she's recommending for this? So the, yeah. we're talking st specifically <clears throat> in the case of transfer of real estate that buyers must comply with we're basically eliminating this in no case shall completion date be greater than, and we're eliminating that basically as it is and they must comply with it's the original the original connection order yes they understand that going in i want to if we'll still keep i want to have wording in there. in there that states the buyer must be notified of it um but yeah i feel like that's reasonable and anytime we approve these we always put the condition that if the septic system should become a public health mm -hmm. um, threat that they connect immediately um, or if they're in phase three upgrade the septic All so right. they're they are tied to that stipulation that this is only for a septic system that is not creating a threat to the public health all right now i, I have two questions on that one um they have to commit connect immediately and if they haven't all let's say you're selling all right you haven't done anything, all right? And these, the new people are coming in and the system fails and they don't, haven't contacted anybody about doing anything. What do you do for those people? So this is essentially the buyer assuming responsibility, buyer, buyer beware. You're, you are now taking the fiscal responsibility. So right. whether they work something out in their purchase and sale agreement that that's between those two parties, but they are signing this knowing that the system has not been inspected and may not be in working order. So it's worked the way it's intended to be used for the way that the people have been using it, but them coming in, that could change and they're taking, on, they're, they're assuming financial responsibility. Does it make sense, because I thought for some reason we did this, that if somebody's going to sell, that they had to have it inspected. Well, they do, and that's this waiver was created for the sewer connections. So the buyer is assuming liability the, without inspection. So they're saying it's so close to being connected, we're not going to spend the money to have it inspected. You're getting what you get when it comes to it, but it's a legal document that binds. Somebody takes responsibility, and that's, that's the piece that we lean on is that they're they're going into this with their eyes wide open that the septic has not been inspected that it could I, fail I, at any moment and they're financially responsible if it does I, I guess where i'm coming from with that is not that it's the financial hardship there is that they can't get an engineer and a and someone to do the work yeah. and that's why we're extending it past the 45 days or looking to extend if, if that it, but if it fails if it fails, that's a different story. It's a different story. Yeah. That's why I'm wondering, is, does it, would it make sense, and, and it may be not something we can do, that there should be a requirement. And they should, they should be pumping as necessary to alleviate any issue. So there are other, um, it's not just a matter of connecting. Now, if you have ponding at the surface, you have to, you have to remedy that. Mm -hmm. You have to remedy mm -hmm. that, and you have to have the system either upgraded if you're in phase three, or you have to connect as soon as possible. And I imagine if you're on a contractor's waiting list and you call them and they say, my system's failing, they should, they should out of decency, bump you to the top of their yeah. list. All right, all right. All right, so I would, let's, let's get that one updated. Do we, can we vote on that tonight or not, since it's? I think it's an, it's an internal, document it's okay. not a regulation it's not it's just getting a census on whether the board is okay with me changing that language I think we, yeah, let that, let's get it written up and then we can do we have to vote on it is it so i'm going to no? draft something and bring it to you at the next work session oh, and you can all right. vote there all right sorry guys i'm not going to make you vote on anything except adjourning this meeting okay okay, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right do we have a motion motion to adjourn Good. second Aye. 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 Aye.